Okay, in question two, we're finding sets of values, um, so these are inequalities to solve. Um, this one uh, doesn't have any x squareds in it, so the top one is linear inequality, so you can just use algebra to solve it. Uh, be careful if you have to multiply or divide by a negative, though. Then this one is a classic quadratic inequality, it's got x squared in it, so you must have a graph, okay, uh, and uh, on your graph, it's no secret that it will look like this. Okay, you find the critical values first by solving a quadratic equation, and then you decide which bits of the graph you want. Do you want these edgy bits, like this, in which case you'll want these bits of the x-axis, or do you instead um, want this bit here, in which case you'll want this bit of the x-axis. So there'll either be one section or two sections of the graphs that you want, and you write down your answer accordingly. Now, in part C, we are taking both of these and we want the set of values for x for which both of these are true at once. So if you've got um, your solutions, if you think about a number line and you think about your solutions um, to part A and maybe they look like this from a particular value that way and maybe your solutions in the other part included something like this, then if they're both true, then they'll, they'll be both true on the portions of the number line where both of the original equations, uh, inequalities, sorry, were true. Um, I haven't tried to draw this like yours will be, but where the lines double up, where the solutions double up, these are the ranges you need to describe. There may be one range, there may be two ranges. Okay, you have to see what you get by putting together the solutions from A and the solutions from B on the same number line.